NBA finals. I see you got all kinds of cool stuff in your feed and I'm guessing uh, should we start with I think I, I see you got Curry's award tour. We'll go back yeah. to that in a second, but it seems like okay. you think you got let's just put it out there. You got the Warriors winning the series. I'm guessing right. I do and I know you have the Celtics. Um, I'm going with the Warriors primarily because experience matters and it's worth at least one game in the series. Um, maybe the Celtics are good enough to overcome that that one game experience gap, but I don't think they're quite ready yet. You don't think they're ready. Okay. Um, yeah, experience matters for about um, it matters. It, it mattered yesterday. Okay. <laughs> it mattered during the interviews. You see all the media from around the world and all the questions and all the attention. It's just you two and the finals are a big deal. So this is the first time the Celtics are going through that. The Warriors have been through it uh, now six times. So that matters. I think experience will matter in the first half of the game tonight, but I just can't see it in game three, game four, game five. I, I don't think you can rely on the Warriors experience as a separator in this series. So I'm not dismissing the experience. I'm just saying it's got a shelf life and I think the shelf life is very brief. It's like Snapchat. You look, you look <laughs> and it's there and then it's gone. <laughs> Okay. But you know what? You're, you're right. You're right. It, it dissipates. But I will say, if it does go to seven games, it will resurface, right? Because okay, uh, right. there's even right. though the Celtics, even though the Celtics have had two game sevens in this playoff run alone, but there's a difference between playoff game seven and mm. finals game seven. I once put that to Rasheed Wallace. I said, I, I found like it might be kind of a dumb question. Like, Rasheed, is there a difference between like a regular game seven and a finals game seven? And as Rasheed put it. And I wasn't able to quote this, so now I'm glad I can actually say it. He's like, he's like, the the, the difference is like, pachoo, <laughs> like game seven in the NBA Finals. Like I don't know how you spell that out, but that's literally what Rasheed said. Pachoo, like it's that much higher. It it takes off like your your heart rate and everything else when you're getting ready for an NBA Finals game seven. But I so it say could come even, back into play if it goes seven. Except okay, but in that case, um, combined they're zero and one in game sevens. I think. Because the Warriors have never won a game seven in their in their in the, uh, in the three finals. championships. Not, not in they the never finals, won a game they, seven. They, they, right. Not in the finals. No, the only one. Well, the Celtics right. won a game. Celtics won two game sevens just in this playoffs. But the, the Warriors so have won game finals. sevens during the playoffs. They just have one in the finals. So but the they Celtics, played in a game seven in the finals. I think that makes a difference. Okay, uh, that makes that makes a difference. All right, uh, I'll, I'll say this. But this is where I really want to go, because Steve Kerr says something that I think will go along with one of your feed items and, and and it's really something that just needs to be reconciled because it's it's, it's bubbling there. It's beneath the surface <laughs> and we just got to we got to play. Uh, you be Sigmund Freud. I'll be Carl Jung uh, Alvin Poussant. I'll be like some psychiatrist. <laughs> you know, we'll just we'll just kind of untangle what's happening here because I think we got a clue from Steve Kerr's answer about how these teams are built. Now, it sounds good. It's very quotable, Jay. Like, you're writing a column for the LA Times. I'm writing a column for the Boston Globe back in the day. We're both using it, talking about, oh, they're built the right way, and, you know, mostly through player development and the draft. Hold on, dog. Are we going to act like that you didn't have <laughs> half of your finals appearances with some dude who you didn't draft and you didn't develop? Some dude who won two finals MVPs. One of them, he averaged 35 in the finals. You and, and so that's the issue. <laughs> See, that's why Kevin Durant is so pissed off and I don't blame him because it's almost like the Warriors see this huge. It's not just an elephant. It's like a whole it's Zootopia in the room and and they act like Kevin Durant is not there. Or they act like Kevin Durant wasn't a part of their fabric like he was. And it bothers him. And and in comments like Steve Kerr went saying this and Steve Kerr saying when they were a lottery team, hey, I actually enjoyed coaching this team more than I did our last championship run. And Kerr and, and KD said, that doesn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense to me either. <laughs> well, to me, the most so that, awkward part. 
came in the midst of it after they won the first championship at the parade bob myers the gm made a joke about well kevin doesn't count he wasn't here he's not like an original one of the guys like that like he separated the team into our guys and the outsiders in the championship celebration so you, i always wonder if the seed was planted that day if kd was like man i'll never be accepted as one of the guys but here's the thing we we can debate impact and and who was responsible for this or that a quick point michael is that their first finals mvp from their first championship was a guy they acquired in a i don't know if it was a trade or, or a free agency signing but andre Iguodala was not drafted yeah. by the warriors either so all of their finals mvps were not drafted i think that's worth pointing out uh, but here's the thing I want to point out. They played 10 NBA Finals games with Kevin Durant. They won nine of those 10 games, including the one in which he Ooh. tore his Achilles. He started that game, and they still won wow. that game. Without Kevin wow. Durant, they played 18 NBA Finals games. This group of Warriors, this core of Warriors, they won eight out of the 18. They're eight and 10 without Durant. With Durant, they're virtually unbeatable in the NBA Finals. That's Without great, Durant, that's they're, you know, it, it could go either way. So, so that's and the I'm definitive. I'm stealing it. <laughs> <And> I'm stealing <laughs> you can use it. You know that it doesn't mean that they're not credit, worthy. Credit, Look, they, credit J.A. and Dante, eight and ten without Durant. Yes. <laughs> They've made three NBA Finals Boston without Sports Durant. Tonight. NBC Sports Boston. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> they, they've made three NBA Finals without Kevin Durant, and that's noteworthy, and that's an accomplishment yep. in and of itself. But again, with Kevin Durant, they were virtually unbeatable. Um, yeah. His his skill, it, the what LeBron had to say. LeBron's acknowledgement, basically, he called him a juggernaut with Durant. The, the respect that LeBron had for Durant, the respect the other Warriors had for Durant when they first got him. I was out there at that training camp, and they were just amazed seeing it up close every day in practice how great he was. I'll never forget. Andre Iguodala said he doesn't need to adjust to us. We need to adjust to him. Ooh. And let's give Ooh, Steph Curry good. credit for welcoming him and for, you know, taking on that risk, so to speak, that, okay, we can bring in this guy, we're going to win championships, and mm -hmm. it's probably going to mean that I won't get as much credit as I would otherwise because we could probably win championships without him. We're definitely going to win championships with him. It's going to, you know, be a slight hit to my resume, but I care about winning the championships. So we should credit Curry for being willing to take that on. I do. I, I give them a lot of credit for that because, you know, they had won the championship. I mean, they'd been to two finals without Ke uh, without Kevin Durant. So, you know, they, they handled Cleveland pretty easily. I felt like the first time 2015. Uh, well, I know they were Draymond trailing two to, two to one, though. And, yeah. and remember, Draymond but, says that, oh, nobody well, beat us when we were whole. Cleveland that wasn't that was whole later. that, that, that first year. Right. That first year they weren't. Who got hurt? In Cleveland, the first, the first final. Kyrie gets yeah. hurt in the first game. Kevin Love was hurt like early in the playoffs against your Celtics. That was the first your boys one. put him out. That was the first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so they beat Cleveland Kelly without Olenek. Kyrie. That's right. Kelly and, and Kevin Love. <laughs> pulling his shoulder out. And then not only that, though, not only did he pull his shoulder out. That Thank you for that uh, reminder. He pulled his shoulder out. He was like, what? what? That, wasn't, that wasn't a dirty. That wasn't a dirty play. Like what? What's, what's going on? Um, but not only that, so they were they, they won the first uh, championship in six games. I think they celebrated in Cleveland. Then the second one, that was the 73 wins, and that's the comeback. That was a great comeback. 73 win team. By the Cavs. So they, right. had, they had it, but the dimension that they went to. I don't know about you, Jay. I, I've made this comment before. I don't know if you think this is crazy, given the team that you covered. Um in Chicago the best basketball team I've ever seen in my life with all respect to the 96 Bulls with all respect to the 86 Celtics with all respect old timers I see you out there you know 63 Celtics 67 Wilt Chamberlain Sixers 83 I don't know. 76ers 83 fo 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 got it got you I'm telling you Kevin Durant with the Warriors I've never seen anything like it in my life. Best basketball team I've ever seen. You can pick 17 or 18. I'll give you either one. I can make an argument for either one. That was basketball at the highest level I've ever seen. How about well, you? 17 was definitely better than 18. It, it's funny. I went back and looked up the numbers. They, 
they had a point differential. Of, uh, they were plus 11.5 in that regular season, that, that season. So they didn't win the 73 games that year. But, but, I mean, they were beating teams by double digits every single night. And they almost ran yeah. the table in the playoffs. It's, it's ironic. The one loss that they had in the finals with Durant was the best team that they had. And if you remember, it was an almost perfect game by Cleveland, which Cleveland had some great talent on that team as well, most notably LeBron right. James. They put up almost 50 points in the first quarter of that game. And, you know, they, they, they just weren't – nobody was beating Cleveland on that night. But that's what it took to get a game, even just a game, off that team. Um, best ever, I, I, I'm not so sure – and it's funny because we don't talk about the Kobe Shaq any of those years as, as the best single team ever, right? But and they had some great ones. Especially the and 2001, when, when, when they almost ran the table in the playoffs. Remember well, they – they, 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 they lost, lost one, one game. They lost, one, they lost game yeah. one of the finals. After they didn't, they'd been off for yeah. like two weeks because they'd swept through the Western Conference finals. And they lost that one game in overtime. And um, as I'll never forget, I, I went up. Uh, Brian Shaw was walking into the arena with me then. And I was asking him how like that team matched up with some of the Laker teams he was on. His one question was, what would they do about Shaq? You know, what would those Warriors <laughs> have done about Shaq? <laughs> Ignore him. He said, look, you go get your 50. You're going to get your 50. <laughs> we're going to try to, we're, we're going to, you can't do anything about Shaq. But then again, see, this is where, and, and I, I know great players figure things out. I understand this. Great players figure it out of, of all eras. But it is hard for me to, to think about, like, some of those teams from the 80s, 80s and early 90s, playing this three-point game. They developed their three-point shot. But how about the switches? Like, I just can't imagine, like, what, okay, what do they do about Shaq offensively? Yeah, that's a problem. But what does Shaq right, do they're, about they're draw him out. all yeah. of the, yeah, like, what is, how does he handle all that? I guess if, if he knows, if he's, if he's coming up in this era, does he, uh, does he drop like 35 pounds? And does he become. Work on his jumper. It, here's the thing, though, and, he, and this is what happens a lot. So, you know, the math is that, okay, shooting like 40% from three is better than shooting like 60% from two, something like that, or equivalent. Right, right. But like, Shaq's got a much better chance of shooting 60% inside the paint for most of the series than you have of shooting 40%. You know, you're not always going to shoot 40%. Yeah, right. Shaq, right, right, Shaq right. you can count on him, you know, shooting above 50% every game, right? You can't count probably, on making 40% probably of your threes 70%. every game. Right. Probably 70%, <laughs> okay, inside, which brings me back to the presence. See, this is why I'm going to put it out there. See, I'm, I'm not going to wait until game one to make a prediction. I think the Celtics win this series quite comfortably. I didn't say easily. I think they win it quite comfortably because I really don't see the, 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 the Golden State doesn't have a rim protector. Who said they don't have a rim protector? They're, they're below average in the league when it comes to protecting the rim. Draymond, Looney. Uh, they, yeah, but they're, but they're like uh, they're like 18th in the league in block shots. They turn the ball over. This is what shocks me. They're bottom two in the league in turnovers. Only yeah. team that's worse with with turnovers is the Houston Rockets. So they foul a lot. They turn the ball over, and they don't protect the rim. I I think that's a bad. Thing. <laughs> you know, I don't really like all of those. When I check my vital signs for my championship teams. I don't like checking in and, and, and looking at that. It's like your doctor saying, okay, you know what? You're on the verge of something. You're doing well now, but you need to cut down the sugar and you need to work out a little bit more or it's going to be a problem. You're doing all right right now, but those signs, I don't, I don't really like what I see there from the Warriors. I, I really think the Celtics are going to win this thing right there. Give me the uh, plus 450 Celtics and six to be comfortable. <laughs> Although if I'm feeling real bold, if I'm feeling real bold, I'm looking at that plus 900. So you're Celtics thinking the, the, the Celtics are going to win two games in San Francisco. First NBA yeah. Finals games played ever in San Francisco, by the way. Um, yeah, but, great. So that, that, that's what you mean, because one thing you can count on statistically is that the Warriors are going to win a game in Boston because they won a road playoff game in 26 consecutive series now. So you can, can count on them getting yeah. at least one in Boston. So that means in order to win, the Celtics are going to have to win twice in San Francisco. Tonight. So basically you're saying game two start, and game six. Start, or maybe game one. 
Game one. Why, I'm why, very, why are we very conceding? surprised if they win game. Be, because I You'll told be you, Michael, it's different. One? There's levels of this, and like it every time I love you it. move up to another level, you basically yeah. have to like subtract one win for the team that's playing at this stage for the very first time. And if we're going with patterns, if we're going with patterns, if you got if you got the Warriors winning tonight, that wouldn't make sense because the Celtics. They, they barely, I mean, they won game one at the buzzer against Brooklyn. Uh, you know, that was close. They, they, you could say they probably should have lost that game, but they won it. They lost game one against Milwaukee. They lost game one against Miami. And if, if we're following that pattern, you know, especially against Milwaukee and Miami, uh, probably either a close game tonight or a loss based on what they've done before. But they usually lose those games and then bounce back. I would like to see what Golden State does down in the series. I don't think they've been down in the postseason yet, right? They Not haven't this year. But but one thing, again, that's right. where you get back to the experience. So they trailed twice in their first run in 2015. They fell behind 2-1 to Memphis, and that's when Steve Kerr first started going with the, the death lineup, so that prompted a big change. And and then um, they were down 2-1 in the finals to LeBron. And uh, – Basically just LeBron because, again, like we said, they didn't have Kyrie or Kevin Love. So they trailed 2-1 in their first finals. So they, they Draymond and Clay and staff have been behind before. So I think they'd be comfortable playing from behind in the series. That, that wouldn't freak them out too much. I mean, I, I, I could, I could you, see a scenario, Michael, where, where, where um, you know, they, they – uh, actually, you know what? I have to correct myself because Celtics in six – that would be winning at home. I was thinking back to the 2-3-2 two, two days. So if the Celtics right. win in six, let me make a quick revision. You have them winning game six at home. So um, let me amend that. But but I think, you know, I, I, I think that the, the Warriors would be fine going down 2-1. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.